go into the world and tell every man that you meet there is a man on the cross a catholic take what you need to know right now a bold synthesis of inspiration and information keeping you up to date on the news and issues from a courageous catholic perspective a Catholic Take with Joe McLean starts now. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean. So good to be on with you, especially in the middle of our fun drive week. It's that time of year, fall, where we come to you and ask you for your financial contribution. It's important that you are on our team, that you are the wind in the sails, and we have much to accomplish together. So we're going to need your financial contribution. And this hour, We want to make this hour a huge hour, so we've been challenged. If we can raise 10 grand, we can get 10 grand more. So we have to hit 10 grand, and if we can do that, a a donor is standing by to give us an additional 10 grand on top. Could be a $20,000 hour. The only way that's going to happen is if we get these phone lines lit up and and ringing the entire hour. That phone number is 877-711-8500. If we can raise 10, we get another 10. Could be 20,000. Super quick, super easy. 877-711-8500 is that phone number to get us started. That is 877-711-8500. But I also want to talk about Christian persecution in this hour. Where are the saints? There's a persecution happening right now under our noses. And I'm not talking about the soft stuff that happens here in the West. I'm talking about real actual persecution. Nigeria, I'm thinking of you. Armenia, I'm thinking of you. I want to cover some of that for you in this hour. What is the latest story in the Armenian Christian persecution that almost everyone seems to be ignoring right now? I mean, but climate change is on the agenda, 100%, absolutely. Same-sex blessings, no problem. Women ordination, all the rest. But where is the outrage? Where is the outspokenness? Where are the encyclicals? Where are, are the speeches for the Christians in Armenia? I don't know. But we're going to have that conversation at 30 past the hour. And then, of course, I want to share with you at 15 past the life of Edmund Campion, a man who gave it all for the, go- for the good of souls, for the good of souls. Many were converted as a result to his heroic witness. We're going to talk about that at 15 past the hour. So lots of stories in the news to cover for you. We, of course, share all of our show notes on the website at thestationofthecross.com forward slash ACT. But we have a lot to get into today. As I said, it is a challenge hour. If we can raise 10, we can get another 10. Could be 20,000. All I need from you is your yes. Just make that phone call. Any gift, any size, whatever's on your heart, 877-711-8500. Anthony came in big last night at the very end when I was saying goodbye. Anthony from Hamburg, New York, $2,300 and a first-time donor. Anthony, you're amazing. God bless you. God love you. You you are incredible. You really helped us out last night, and we are so very grateful for that. But uh, we have to get started this hour. So, again, $10,000. It's a challenge gift. If we can raise 10, we can get 10. So we need all hands today. 877-711-8500 is the phone number. 877-711-8500. Please call now. Let's uh, let's get started. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known, that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and now your Saint of the Day. Saint Francis of Assisi, pray for us. Francis was born in 1181 the son of a wealthy merchant. A somewhat wayward youth and briefly a soldier, he converted while a prisoner of war, and to the displeasure of his parents, Francis rejected worldly possessions and voluntarily became a beggar. His father eventually disowned him, and Francis threw himself fully into a life of poverty in the service of God and his fellow men. Followers accumulated, and in 1209, the Order of of Friars Minor, or Franciscans, were officially approved. A few years later, Francis's student, St. Clair, would found a counterpart order, the Poor Clares. 
St. Francis was fiercely zealous in his desire to convert souls, and at one point sent out to convert the very Sultan of the Turks. Though the Sultan eventually ordered Francis expelled back to Italy, he was impressed with the friar's preaching, as were many of his fellow Saracens, and afterwards treated other Christians with greater favor. Francis eventually resigned from leading his order in 1220, and retired to a life of strict fasting and penance in the mountains. There, in 1224, Francis saw a vision of a six-winged seraph crucified, and received the stigmata, the first in recorded history. He suffered greatly with these wounds of Christ until his death in 1226. Less than two years later, he was canonized by an old friend, now Pope Gregory IX. Francis is known widely as a patron of animals and the poor, though this image in modern times often fails to do justice to his zealous spirituality. He was responsible for the first nativity creche, and his evangelization to the Muslims had long-lasting effects in the Holy Land. For a long time, he was also one of the most popular intercessors against demonic possession. St. Francis of Assisi, pray for us. And now your headline news. The Daily Wire reports Hunter Biden pleads not guilty to gun charges. Hunter Biden pleaded not guilty on Tuesday to a trio of felony gun charges at a federal courthouse in Wilmington, Delaware. Biden faces a maximum of 25 years in prison and up to $750,000 in fines if convicted. Hey, thanks for that phone call, by the way. Lines are open, 877-711-8500. Please call now. The Blaze reports Pennsylvania school board bans boys from using girls' bathrooms following student walkout and successful pressure campaign. Earlier this month, a school board in Pennsylvania voted against a policy requiring boys and girls to use bathrooms corresponding to their biological sex. The 5-4 vote was denounced by parents and students alike, and the students staged walkouts in protest. In a stunning reversal Monday, the Pecorman Valley School Board in Montgomery County passed the policy which applies to the use of restrooms and locker room facilities in all of the district's schools and by all of its 5,000 students and 760 staff members. Catholic Vote reports Kevin McCarthy ousted from speakership Every House Democrat joined Rep. Matt Gates from Florida and seven other Republicans in a vote to remove Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy from the speakership yesterday. The former speaker announced, quote, I will not run for speaker again, close quote. McCarthy, uh, uh, McCarthy's ouster represents the first time in history that a House speaker has been removed. And those, those are your headline news. Hey, thanks for that phone call. Praise be to God. Can you make your phone call right now? Join us. Phone lines are open 877-711-8500. Trying to raise $10,000 this hour so we can get an additional $10,000. That phone number is 877-711-8500. All proceeds to the Station of the Cross to bring you programming just like this. The Gospel today comes to us from Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62. As Jesus and his disciples were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, Let the dead bury their dead, but you go. Proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first, let me say farewell to my family at home. Jesus answered him, No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Haydock's Catholic Bible Commentary. By the way, thanks for that phone call. That phone line is open for you, 877-711-8500. Please call, make your pledge of support today, 877-711-8500. Haydock's Catholic Bible Commentary today said, Although the sovereign Lord of all is most munificent, yet he does not lavish his gifts on all without distinction, but bestows them on the worthy only. Did you catch that? It's bestowed upon the worthy only. When, therefore, this man offered to follow Christ, he answers him by telling him that all who follow him must daily take up their cross and renounce the conveniences of this life. Have we done that? Have we? I'm just curious. Have we 
who want to follow Christ, have we taken up our cross daily? Have we renounced the conveniences of this life like St. Francis of Assisi renounced those conveniences and lived in a cave in, in complete aridity? When his brother fires were living a little bit too convenient for him, he removed himself. Did you catch that? Not just the patron saint of zookeepers or bird baths. St. Francis of Assisi was was an incredible saint, a, an amazing saint, because he renounced the conveniences of life and took up his cross daily. Thus, Hadock goes on to say, thus he mentions what was reprehensible in his person. There appears likewise great presumption in his conduct as he did not petition to be admitted as other Jews did, but seems to claim the honor of the apostleship, an honor which none must assume, but such as are called by God. You must be sent. You can't just decide to do this on your own. You must have a sending. You must have a call and a sent. And this first to this first character, he just assumes I mean, he says, I will follow you wherever I go. <laughs> he just makes the assumption. Well, let us be like St. Francis, receiving our call, answering our call, taking up our cross today, and going where none but the sent should go. Think about that today. I want you to ponder that today. There's so much more that can be said. Maybe I'll share more of this as the show goes on. But uh, we're trying to raise $10,000 this hour. All for the glory of God, all for the salvation of souls. We are trying to do something no one else is doing in the Catholic radio world, and we need your financial support. And if I can raise 10 grand this hour, I've got a donor on standby to give me another 10 on top. That could be a $20,000 power hour. We need your help to get there. 877-711-8500. Can you do your part? Just like Elizabeth in Penyan, New York. We're praying for the conversion of sinners right along with you, Elizabeth, and thank you for your generous gift. We'll be right back. I'm a Catholic who has returned to the faith after 30 years. I hunger to learn more and more every single day about our most cherished faith. Your radio station quenches my hunger for that knowledge. I love Catholic radio so very much. I've been a Boston cab driver for 29 years now, and I get up really early in the morning, 3 a.m., and I love the Holy Hour because it inspires me, and I especially love the celebration of the Holy Eucharist, the Mass. It's just awesome. I'm a Catholic, and this is our Catholic voice. You guys are our Catholic voice, and I really love listening to you, and uh, it keeps my mind on track with Jesus. And thank you very much for all that you do. I'm so thankful for Catholic Radio because after being away from the church for over 20 years, I had been attending an evangelical church. Well, I was disillusioned because of all the doctrinal and denominational divisions among Protestants, and I thought, how could God be the author of that? So one night, I turned on the car radio to listen to the Protestant radio program I always listen to. Providence had it, I hit the wrong button. I got Catholic radio instead, and I was about to change it, but they were discussing the very issue that troubled me. How could so many sincere evangelical Protestants who really love God have so many opposing teachings? Because that was my issue. I stayed tuned and fascinated and agreeing to the discussion. The next night, I wanted more, so I tuned in again. I never went back to the other station again. Because of what I learned on Catholic radio, I examined Catholic teachings, and I returned to the church. So I'm greatly indebted to Catholic radio, and I have a burning desire to tell everyone about Christ's church. On my way out of a local church, I saw the Station of the Cross bumper sticker and then kept seeing them on cars. I turned into 101.7 and have been grateful ever since. It has helped me to think and grow in my faith, prayer life, and answer the call to go out to the whole world and make disciples. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to A Catholic Take. A bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean. So good to be on with you. Praise be to God. And coming up at 30 past the hour, not only do we have more breaking news and stories for you, but I want to talk to you about the Armenian persecution. Uh, these Christians that have been forced out of their homes, attacked by military forces. And where's the outcry for them? Where are the the speeches from balconies? Where are the encyclicals? Where are the synods getting together to talk about what are we going to do to save these Christians that are being persecuted today, let alone places like Nigeria or the Middle East, 
There's a silence, a deafening silence when Christians are actually suffering and dying and we're almost doing nothing about it. I want to talk to you about that at 30 past the hour. Do join us if you can. We're in the midst of our fall campaign for Fund Drive, and we're so grateful for every single donor who steps up and provides their hard-earned money for the work of evangelization. Because that's a big theme in this show today is there's the persecution going on. Where are the saints? Well, I got to tell you, I'm so inspired by those who call in their gifts because I know how hard it is to earn the money, to just get by, paycheck to paycheck. I totally understand exactly what you're, what you're dealing with, and yet you still give. Yet you still give, and it's incredibly inspirational. Phone lines are open this hour. It's a challenge hour. Uh, if, if I can raise $10,000 this hour, then I have a donor on standby to give me another ten. Could be a $20,000 power hour, but I need your help to get there. Phone lines are open at 877-711-8500. That phone number is 877-711-8500. Just like Anonymous in Rainham, Massachusetts, on the board at $120. God bless you. God love you. That's amazing. Isabel from New Mexico. Isabel's from New Mexico. One-time gift of $100 and a first-time donor says prayers for all the youth to return to the faith. Isabel, that's a great prayer. We're praying for that one for sure. Teresa from Elmira, New York is on the board. $30 one time. God bless you. God love you. I appreciate that, uh, Teresa. Thank you very much for your generosity today. So that brings us to $9,390 uh, to go still in this hour. Phone lines are open at 877 711 8500-877-711-8500. I want to share with you the life and the story of St. Edmund Campion. Raise your hand if you've heard of Edmund Campion before. Just go ahead, raise your hand. You know, you might have even seen the movie. What was that? What's the guy's name? The guy who just played James Bond for the past decade? Uh, whatever that actor's name is. I forget his name. I didn't really care for him as James Bond all that much. But nonetheless, he once played in a movie about the life of uh, of Queen Elizabeth, where he played the bad guy. He played the villain in the film. Guess who the villain was? Edmund Campion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we talk about, talk about historical revisionism or historical perspective. I suppose if you're on the side of Queen Elizabeth, then uh, that would be your perspective, that Edmund Campion would be seen as an enemy coming from across the waters to to murder her, to to end her reign or take away her control over England. Edmund Campion was born in London in about 1540, uh, January 25th of 1540. He was born just at, I mean, just a few years after King Henry VIII had revolted from Holy Mother Church had taken power uh, and confiscated church property, you know, and put people to death as a result to not going along with his side of the equation, his story. And we all remember the incredible saints, right? Uh, St. Thomas More, right? We remember, we remember uh, St. John Fisher, the only bishop to stand up to say, no, I'm not going along with this. Thomas More, the chancellor, who lost his life as a result of being faithful to Holy Mother Church and to the Holy See of Rome. Boy, this is the era in which Edmund Campion is born. Trying to raise $10,000 this hour. I heard that phone ring. I'm very grateful for that phone ringing. I've got a long way to go. Can you help with that? 877-711-8500. 877-711-8500. I need your pledge of support now to be able to hit this $10,000 challenge gift. If I can get 10, someone's going to give us another 10. That's a huge hour, which we absolutely need. Could you potentially do a dollar a day? We'd, you'd, we're going to send you that book by Thomas Akempis, another Englishman, uh, on the meditations on death. I think you're going to be very blessed by that at 877-711-8500. That phone number is 877-711-8500. At the age of 13, uh, now that England had lost its dowry to Our Lady, that was his nickname. Did you know that England was uh, basically like, like France is the eldest daughter, England was the dowry of Our Lady. Well, that was gone with King Henry VIII. But by the age of 13, Edmund Campion was already a shining star. And by that point, Mary was queen, and she was Catholic, and she brought the, the, the country back to the Catholic faith. And the Holy Mass was being said, and uh, it was beautiful. And Edmund Campion 
was very given over to it. And he gave a speech at 13 years old. He gave a speech in front of the queen and she was smitten with him. And he began to attract by 17. He had his own like disciples. They would call themselves the Campionites. And uh, he was attracting a reputation at the youngest possible age. By the time he was receiving his master's degree at 1564, he was required to take the oath of allegiance because by now Elizabeth was on the throne and she revolted against Holy Mother Church yet again. So he had to take the oath of allegiance in order to go along to get along as a requirement of his degree, which he did, but this began to cause great troubles for him. He did also give a speech to Elizabeth at the age of 26, and she also was very taken by him. His his intellectual prowess was amazing and evident to all. And he began to apply this to the Anglican question. He began to ask difficult questions about Anglicanism and Protestantism. Is it true? He would ask his peers and his superiors about this, and they would give him answers that would not satisfy him. And he realized that the Catholic faith was, in fact, the true faith, the one holy Catholic and apostolic faith. And he had to make a tough decision. So he made the decision to flee England. He went to Ireland hoping he could live there. But in fact, the persecution followed him because Queen Elizabeth would be excommunicated by papal bull and she would spread Anglicanism into Ireland. In fact, there was a hit list put out and his name was on it because he refused He refused to go along to get along. He refused to attend Anglican services. And so they were out to hunt him down. Hey, by the way, can I just thank Deacon Thomas of East Amherst, New York, $720, a benefactor. Praise be to God. Thank you, Deacon. That is amazing. We are so very grateful to you, Deacon. Says, uh, uh, let me just uh, pull this over so I can see the entire comment here. It says, Uh, Catherine would like to pray for the repose of the soul of Deacon Dave Rotterman, uh, who would have been 60 years old today, praying for his wife as well. God bless you, Deacon. That really helped out. That was a big gift, and we are praying for your intentions today. $8,670 still to go. It's the challenged hour. That phone number is 877-711-8500. If we can raise the 10 grand, we're going to get an additional 10 grand, and we need every single penny of it. We missed a lot of goals yesterday, so we would really love to make up some ground this morning. Could you help? 877-711-8500 is that phone number. We're going to offer this uh, hour up to Our Lady for her intentions. Please do join us in that. 877-711-8500. Like Christine in Wellesley, Massachusetts. $150. $150. God bless you. God love you, Christine. I'm very grateful you were on the team this morning. Thank you for being on our side. 877-711-8500 is the phone number to call. So Edmund Campion is making some difficult choices. He decides to go back to England. He gets on a boat, and the agents that are are boarding the boat along with him and asking for him. Have you seen Edmund Campion? And they ask him, hey, you, sir. Do you, are you Edmund, do you know Edmund Campion? And he had been going by the, the nickname of, of Mr. Patrick while he was in Ireland. So he just said, no, I'm Mr. Patrick. And so they, so they were able to, uh, you know, not arrest him at that time. But once he gets back to England, he sees how bad things are. There's a major persecution going on in England of Catholics. Thanks to, uh, the excommunication of Elizabeth, things just got really heated he decides he can't he can't avoid this any longer, and he boards a ship for France where he enrolls at the English College at Douai, and it, I think that's what 1571 right now. So he goes and he he finishes or he goes through his college and his seminary in formation to prepare for the priesthood. But in 1573, he decides to join the Jesuits, who are happy to take him. He becomes an instructor, and he teaches, and he forms the next round of Jesuits, many of which actually go to England and become martyrs. And he begins to grow uh, somewhat jealous of the fact that they are there giving themselves completely and entirely to the cause. So he decides he wants to join that rank of martyrs as well. 1580, he goes to Rome, and there he meets with the Pope, and he talks about the mission in England, and he receives his orders to go and to be very careful. And he writes that his challenge in his uh, challenge to uh, to the Privy 
council, he writes to them that his only purpose is the good of souls because they had to write it down because they know if they were arrested, they weren't really going to be given an opportunity to defend themselves. But he writes to the challenge uh, to the Privy Council, which would later, later be called the Campion's Brag, that it, the good of souls was all that mattered. He acknowledged the queen but he only cared for the good of souls. Well, he would go and his reputation would spread far and wide before him. People were reading the Campion's Brag and passing it around. It got to the point where he had to write a more extensive version of that, and he would call that the 10 Reasons Against Protestantism, and that too would spread far and wide. He would only be in England for about a year and a half during his mission and his life there as a priest, hiding in priest hidey holes and saying masses in private hidden chapels and Catholic homes. Well, there would be a, a spy at one of his masses in a, 1581, and he would be reported. And then a famous pr uh, priest hunter would be called to sweep the house several times looking for the hidey hole. And eventually he was discovered and he would be hauled away, a sign put on his head, Campion, a seditious Jesuit. But as they were hauling him away under arrest, the crowd would gather and they would actually taunt his accuser taunt the guy who arrested him, George Eliot, who was a Catholic. They would be calling him the the uh, the Judas, which was very, very interesting. He'd be taken to the Tower of London. He'd be put into a small little cell where he couldn't either, he couldn't stretch himself out on the floor. He couldn't stand up uh, straight. So he was cramped in here for several days by being tortured and being uh, interrogated. They wanted to be able to prove that he was out to uh, to murder the queen. He was a seditious traitor. Of course, he denied all of this. And in fact, he'd be tortured over months and then be uh, be brought out to have debates. They would never tell him when and where these would happen. He could never prepare or have books or be read. They weren't feeding him. They were torturing him. And yet every single time he would be debated, he would win because he had God on his side and he was an incredible, incredible mind. His mind was very, very astute and sharp. And he converted many just right there in those debates he would convert. But... Ultimately, he would be accused of wanting to murder the queen, and he and his companions would be hung, drawn, and quartered. That means their body would be ripped into parts. Blood would splatter all over the audience. And Henry Walpole would receive a splattering of Ke Edmund Campion's blood, and he would go and become a priest, converting to the Catholic faith, and he himself would die a martyr in the English mission. Because... When there is a need, when darkness reigns most, the light of Christ must shine in the darkness. And we must go there and we must make converts and give of our very lives and take up our crosses and never, ever look back when God calls. We must give up the conveniences of this life and become saints. What else is there? We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. I was stuck in heavy commuter morning traffic. I was so frustrated, and I just looked across the lane, and I saw a bumper sticker that said, 1060, try God. I immediately put the station on, and I have been a listener ever since. And you know what? Now I love my commute. My name is Barb from Erie, Pennsylvania, and I listen to Catholic radio when I'm in my car. I particularly enjoy listening when I'm alone because I can really concentrate on the messages the programs convey. You have a nice mixture of presenters, and I believe it to be a great catechizer. At 82, I'm still learning things about my faith. I have many family members who have left the faith, and I really enjoy listening to Catholic radio. It keeps me up to date with current events and how they affect our faith life, and every day I learn more and more about what it is to be Catholic. Lo and behold, there was a bumper sticker in front of me in traffic at a red light, and I turned on that station, and I was hooked to 1060. I couldn't believe it. I ended up in the Catholic Church, reconciliation with the conversion, and it has been glorious ever since. The Holy Spirit has just filled me with joy, and I can't say enough about my church and the beautiful life that I am going to have with the Catholic Church. I just want to say thank you for the bumper stickers. I don't drive to work, but I put them on my bag. I've got a lot of comments from people, and a lot of people tell me they listen to the station. It's a wonderful station. I'm glad you brought it to Boston. I love all the apologetics 
and love all the special coverage that you have. So it's been a real comfort to my life as I don't get out as much as I used to. Thank you very much for all the good work that you do. And I tell my friends all about it and hope that they can support you as well for your good work. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean, and here are your headline news. Breitbart reports job openings unexpectedly surge higher, putting pressure on Fed to hike again. Job openings at U.S. employers unexpectedly surged in August to the highest since May, putting pressure on the Federal Reserve to hike interest rates again this year and keep rates higher for longer in the coming year. The number of vacant positions increased to 9.61 million on the last business day of August from an upwardly revised 8.92 million at the end of July. The Labor Department's job openings and labor turnover survey showed yesterday things are not looking good. Catholic Vote reports Michigan becomes only state to mandate judges use of preferred pronouns. A recent ruling has made Michigan the only state in the union to mandate that judges address attorneys, plaintiffs, and defendants in court by their preferred pronouns. The Michigan Supreme Court voted 5-2 to two to approve the change. The new rule, which will go into effect in 2024, allows attorneys to include their preferred forms of address or pronouns in the captions of court documents. In Catholic News Agency reports, Pope Francis issues a new call for dramatic climate change measures. Pope Francis released an apostolic exhortation on Tuesday in which he called for aggressive, globally enforced climate legislation. Quote, it is no longer possible to doubt the human anthropic origin of climate change. Close quote. Francis would go on to say, quote, I feel obliged to make these clarifications, which may appear obvious because of certain dismissive and scarcely reasonable opinions that I encounter, even within the Catholic Church. Close quote. And those, those are your headline news. Could you imagine? Oh, man, globally enforced. Hey, by the way, we are in the midst of our fall campaign. Heaven is our home is our theme this time. Heaven is our home. Is heaven your home? Have you made heaven your ultimate destination? Have you claimed that? Have you got on your knees? Have you prayed that? Have you asked God to get you there? Do you ask every single day to make heaven your home? As disciples, we ought to be. So we are reminded this week that heaven is our home and there is no second place. There's only achieving this goal and second place doesn't quite get us there, does it? So we got to get there. And we're asking for your help, your financial help, to spread that word as far and wide as fast as possible because this world desperately, desperately needs that, don't they? I mean, I think we can agree to that. So right now, we're in the middle of a challenge hour. If we can raise 10, we're going to get an additional $10,000, but we have to hit it first. If we don't, if I get $9,999 by the time this hour ends here in 27 minutes, then I don't get any of the additional 10. Zero, zero dollars. We have to hit all 10,000 first before we get it. So I need your help to do that. 877-711-8500 is the phone number. 877-711-8500. Can I just thank Michelle from New Hampshire? From Meredith of all places. Beautiful place. If you've never been to Meredith, New Hampshire, you ought to go. It's quite lovely. First time donor, $25. You're on the board, Michelle. Thank you so much for your generous gift. So appreciate you being here. Mike from Ashby, Massachusetts. On the board, $100. God bless you, and God love you, Mike. Thank you for being on the team. So right now, we need $8,395 to go still in this hour. 26 minutes now to raise that money. 877-711-8500. It only takes a moment to make the phone call. It's fast. It's easy. It's secure. Volunteers are standing by to take your call at 877 711 Eight five zero zero. You can make a monthly pledge. You can do a one-time gift. Whatever, whatever is on your heart. It's not the dollar amount that matters to us most. It's the yes that you make. It's I want to get off the fence and I want to be an evangelist. I'm going to put my money where my heart is. My heart wants to see the world change for good. Wants the good of souls, as Edmund Campion wrote so very clearly 
in his Campion's brag. So we want to join St. Edmund Campion in the work of evangelization. You have to fund the, the mission in order to be able to supply for the need. That phone number is 877-711-8500. I can tell you every single penny counts. So whatever you can do, can you do maybe the sustainer level? That's $240. We're going to send you a crucifix from Italy just to say thank you uh, for that. Then there's the mission partner. That's a dollar a day gift. And you can do that in a monthly installment as well. We're going to send you the uh, the Thomas Akempis book, The Meditations on Death, Preparing for Eternity. It's a great book. You're going to love it, published by Tan. We're going to mail that to you along with the crucifix from Italy. Or the benefactor level, that's a $720 commitment. You can also break that up into monthly payments. In addition to the Thomas Akempis book and the crucifix, we'll also send you the plaque of the St. Gertrude Prayer. But we need an Apostle Club level gift, I think, if we're going to hit our goal this hour. And uh, $8,000 is a long way to go. So maybe, just maybe, you might be able to do the Apostle Club level gift. That's a 1560 gift. You can, again, do that in monthly installments. But not only do you get the crucifix from Italy, not only do you get the book from Thomas Akempis, not only do you get the St. Gertrude prayer plaque from Nelson Woodcraft, but you also get a beautiful 12 by 16 image of the church triumphant, the church militant, and the church suffering wrapped and cloaked in the Trinity at Holy Mass. At Holy Mass, uh, I'll learn to speak English someday. At Holy Mass, this is a beautiful image. It would look amazing in your home oratory, your chapel, uh, on your wall, in your living room, to remind you of the incredible nature, the dignity, the beautiful mystical place that we find ourselves when we attend Holy Mass, where heaven and earth collide, as St. Paul would say in his letter to the Hebrews, chapter 12 the true Mount Zion. We're going to mail that to you at the Apostle Club level gift, which we're going to need if we're going to hit our goal. It's a challenge gift. If we can raise 10,000, we get an additional 10,000, but we have to raise it all first. And if we don't, we don't get it. It's that simple. 877-711-8500. I'm going to need your call to to get us there. 877-711-8500. I want to talk to you about persecution in Arm, uh, of the Armenians that's happening right now. This is something I've interviewed recently. Um, Edward Clancy from Aid to the Church Need. He was on, I don't know, what was it? Two weeks ago, maybe? We're talking about this. Since then, let me ask you a question. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Do me a favor. Raise your hand. If you have heard any follow-up story on the Armenian persecution in the last couple of weeks on the news. Anything on the news? No? Nothing? Anything on YouTube? Did anybody put anything on YouTube just just to sort of bring up the issue and talk about it? Probably not. I'm guessing not. Because there's almost a deafening silence happening while Christians are actually being persecuted, forced from their homes. We talk about all the mercies of Africans leaving uh, and coming in boat droves to uh, to Italy right now, to Europe right now. They're trying to force their way into to Poland right now. We, we hear of mercy on the southern border of America as millions come across illegally and adding only greater problems to the drug trade, to the sex slave trade, and more, let alone, I mean, there's just so many things that we can mention on that. And we hear all of the talk, all of the lectures, all of the homilies on all of that. But where are the homilies? Where are the exhortations? Where are the letters? Where are the speeches and the press conferences for the Armenian Christians, for the Nigerian Christians? I'm just curious, the Pakistani Christians. Do you hear anything about the Chinese Christians? Anything? It's just rather quiet, isn't it? I saw this article over First Things by Joel Veltkamp, and I wanted to read it to you, or at least try to get through this to you in this hour, but we're trying to raise $10,000 as we're doing it. So we really need your support here. 877-711-8500 is that phone number. 877-711-8500. Michael from Abington, Massachusetts is on the team at $50. Pray for the conversion of family members, also for friend Richard. Michael, we're praying, and we're so very grateful to you. God bless you. Lisa from Brewster, Massachusetts, on the board for $30. God bless you, Lisa. You're amazing. Thank you so much for for joining the team this morning. I'm glad you're on our side, Lisa. That phone number is 877-711-8500. 
Any gift, any size. Just imagine if an army of Lisas and Michaels and Mikes and Michelles and Christines and Deacon Thomases and Teresas and Isabel and Anonymous and Elizabeth, imagine if an army just like them were to show up. Imagine what could happen. Imagine the possibilities. We need $8,315, and I got to do it in the next 20 minutes, or whew, I'm going to lose a ten grand opportunity in addition to what generosity you bring to the table. So all hands... Make for light work. 877-711-8500 is the phone number. Please call right now, 877-711-8500. Let me read this to you, as I think this is important for us to remember, the deafening silence that we're hearing right now in the midst of actual Christian persecution. Thank you for that phone call, by the way, 877-711-8500. Joel says, this September, the end came for Nagrono Karabakh. This tiny mountain region was once home to 120,000 Armenian Christians governing themselves in a de facto independent republic, the Republic of Artska. Armenians have been living in this region for thousands of years, and they have been Christians since the 4th century. The dozens of ancient and medieval churches dotting the landscape bear witness to this history. But for nine months, the dictatorship of Azerbaijan had been blockading this region for nine months. They've been blockading this region. The siege, did you catch that? There was, this was a siege under our watch. This happened. The siege led to a hunger crisis and created dire fuel and medicine shortages. One horrifying indicator of the scale of the suffering, the miscarriage, the miscarriage rate in the territory reportedly quadrupled. Miscarriages quadrupled. The death of children as a direct result. Then Joel goes on to say on September the 19th, Azerbaijan attacked. The military assault drove half of the region's population out of their homes and swamped the capital's hospital with wounded from whom there were no medical supplies. Widespread atrocities were reported, including the apparently deliberate bombing of a group of fleeing children. Five days after the attack began, the Karabakh Armenians accepted Russia's offer to evacuate their population to the neighboring republic of Armenia. Who took them in one more time? Which Christian nation took them in one more time? Just, just remind me which European Union nation brought them in. What, which was it? Italy? The Vatican? No, sorry. No, not them. It was, it was Russia. One more time. In one fell swoop, one of the world's most brutal dictatorships destroyed one of the world's oldest Christian communities. Not only that, but the dictatorship in question receives U.S. military aid and is considered a valued partner of the United States. Just imagine that. The United States. So many evangelicals, so many Catholics in this country think that we, we are somehow out to save the world. Is this an example of saving the world? I'm just curious, just asking the questions. How did conservative Christians in the United States, members of the world's largest, freest, richest, and most influential Christian community, respond to the ethnic cleansing of their co-religionists by a U.S. ally? Excellent question. Excellent question. With almost complete silence. Kelly Jew is, but I'm sure there are legitimate reasons for us to be in places like Libya and um, I don't know so many other Syria. I mean, who knows where we seem to be everywhere these days, but just not in helping Armenian Christians. That's all. Just not that. Anyway, the article goes on to say the two facts make this shameful non-reaction particularly strange. First, since the 1990s, the U.S. has been home to a robust and vocal movement on behalf of persecuted Christians abroad. This movement has been especially strong among conservative Christians. Second, during the Armenian genocide of 1915 to 23, American Christians mobilized to help the genocide's victims as never before in history. They raised a phenomenal $100 million for relief, aiding perhaps 2 million refugees in total. Ebert Hoover uh, would later remark, 
probably um, Armenia was known to the American school child in 1919 only a little less than England. I want you to let that sink in. And I'm going to share more of this on the other side of the break. But we are trying to raise 10000 this hour because we don't want to have a silent voice in the world of despair, the silent voice in the world of corruption. We want to speak loud and proud, bold and courageous. We're, we want to preach truth. Let the chips fall where they may. 877-711-8500. We need your call, and we need it right now. We'll be right back. I'm a hospice nurse here in Massachusetts, and I just wanted to share that I really enjoy your radio station. I spend a lot of time in the car. It allows me to receive spiritual communion and also allows me to pray for my patients on my way to their homes. And sometimes it even gives me ideas of things that I can share about my faith. I love listening to uh, Catholic radio. I work out at uh, the gym every morning and I faithfully have my iPhone on and listen to your station. I wouldn't be without it. Thank you for all you do. What Catholic radio has done for me is to understand the difference between fake Catholic and real Catholic. Thank you. I love all the apologetics and love all the special coverage that you have. It's been a real comfort to my life as I don't get out as much as I used to. So thank you very much for all the good work that you do. And I tell my friends all about it and hope that they can support you as well for your good work. A few years ago, when I walked away from the culture, when I turned off the television, and tossed out the newspaper, I discovered the Station of the Cross radio station. When I received my first rosary, the Station of the Cross radio taught me how to pray with Mother Angelica. When I received the Divine Mercy message and the Chaplet of Divine Mercy from Stockbridge, Mass., the Station of the Cross was there. When I discovered the Catholic Bible, it was because the Station of the Cross was teaching the ways of the Church. When I wondered about joining the Catholic Church, the Stations of the Cross station sent me the beginner series books on Catholicism. That led me to join the RCIA program at St. Stephen's. Walking away from the culture gave God room to work in my life. And through my journey into the Roman Catholic Church, the Station of the Cross was there as a guide. Thank you. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean. So good to be on with you. We're in the midst of our fall campaign, asking you for your financial support, because I'm going to be honest with you. If not you, then whom? If you don't come and help out, if you don't join the team, if you if you don't put uh, the wind in the sails of what we're trying to accomplish here at the Station of the Cross Catholic Media Network, then who will? I thank you for that phone call, by the way. It's a big, big next 10 minutes. Because here's the deal. We have 13 minutes on the clock. Right now, I have $7,585 to raise. If we can raise all of that money, $7,585 in the next 13 minutes, then someone's standing by to give us another $10,000 on top. It would be a huge hour and a much needed hour. That phone number is 877-711-8500. Might you consider a gift right now? But Imagine if 100 people called in a gift, $10, $50, $100, whatever it is, that would add up very fast. This is why we need all hands. So if you're listening to me right now and you have not yet made a contribution, let me encourage you, join the team. We want you on our side. We want to do this work along with you. 877-711-8500, just like Teresa in Malden, Massachusetts, $500. Teresa, you're amazing. God bless you. Thank you so much. We really appreciate that. You've come in at the mission partner level, and we are so grateful to you. Praying for those looking for housing and employment. Teresa, that's a great prayer request, and we are definitely praying along with you. Wilma from Welland, Ontario. Canada is on the board. Canada is on the board. Praise be to God. Rochester, Buffalo, Canada is on the board. What's going on there? 877-711-8500. And uh, Wilma says, uh, pr- a family t- praying for a family to go back to the faith. The most prayer request, uh, most often prayer request we receive here is that one, Wilma, where folks want us to pray for their lost loved ones. And that is a big part of what we do. The kind of content that we produce 
answering difficult questions, challenging, inspiring, consoling. We do all of those things on a 24-hour cycle right here at the Station of the Cross Catholic Media Network. And we do that through 20 radio stations, through the iCatholic Radio mobile app, which is global. We also do it through our podcast feeds, which has, you know, almost 5 million downloads. We have, uh, you know, video that we put out on YouTube and Rumble and all kinds of places with hundreds of thousands of of views. I mean, this is the kind of uh, work that we do day in and day out, but we need your financial contribution to get there. And Wilma, you have joined the team, and we are glad you are on our side. Thank you for doing that. That phone call leaves us another opportunity. 877-711-8500. We need your help to get there, and we need it really quickly here. But can I just thank Anonymous from Rochester? (laughs) Rochester's on the team this morning. $30 one time and a first-time donor. Anonymous, you're amazing. God bless you. Thank you for that. Really appreciate it. Eric here from Manilis, New, uh, Manlis, Man, Man Lewis. All right, producer Jake, how do we say this? Is that Manlius, New York? Manlius, thank you. Manlius, New York. I, I, pff, well, here's the trick to speaking English. Have your producer tell you how to do it. That's it. That's all you got to do. Eric, you're the best. Thank you, Manlius, New York. $240 one time. That's a sustainer level gift. Eric, we're going to send you that uh, crucifix from Italy just to say thank you for your generous gift today. Praying for your children. Eric, we are praying too. God bless you. God love you. Sonia from Pittsburgh, New York. $360. That's a that's a mission partner level gift. Glory be to God for that. That leaves us to $6,985, but we only have nine minutes on the clock. Producer Jake is is required by law to kick us off the air right at the top of the hour. So we have got to get this done. I need $7,000 before that nine minutes elapses. And if we can hit that $9,000 or that, uh, that uh, if we hit 10 total, someone's going to give us another 10. I need seven to get to the 10. I've got three. I need 7,000 more, and I only have eight minutes to accomplish that. So if you can give anything, I need you to blaze the phone right now. 877-711-8500. Whatever whatever the gift size is, I need it like right now. Because if we can get the full 10, someone's going to give us an additional 10 matching your generosity. If I don't hit that 10, I do not receive any of that other 10. Do you see? So this is a big deal. I, we only have eight minutes on the clock. I'm going to need your phone call right now. And I'm really going to need you to probably step up that gift as much as you possibly can. Pray about it first, but be quick because we need it. We need it like right now. 877-711-8500 is the phone number. Kathleen from Canout, Ohio. Cano? I'm going to say Cano. Cano, Ohio. If I was in Louisiana, I'd say Cano. Cano, Ohio. $200 one time. Glory be to God, Kathleen. You are amazing. Ask for prayers for children to return to the faith and baptism for her grandchildren. Oof, that is, again, an extremely common prayer that we get here at the Station of the Cross. And we are, of course, praying for you. That phone line is open to you right now at 877-711-8500. 877-711-8500. Anonymous in West Springfield, Massachusetts is on the board for $500. That was a big help. Anonymous, you're amazing. That was a huge help. Thank you for putting a dent. 5,900 to go. Still uh, seven minutes on the clock. 877-711-8500. Will we make it? Will we get to the 10? Only you can tell me that. Only you can help with that. Make a phone call right now. Any gift, any size at 877-711-8500. Still have yet to see an Apostle Club level gift. That's a 1560 commitment Really need to hear that right now. 877-711-8500. You're going to get a canvas of the, of the, uh, the church militant, the church triumphant, the church uh, suffering at Holy Mass with the Holy Trinity. It's a beautiful image. We're going to send that to every Apostle Club level giver at 877-711-8500. Mike is on the board. Ridgeway, Ontario at $350. That's a dollar a day, Mike. You're amazing. God bless you and God love you from Canada. Two from Canada in just the last five minutes. Praying for everyone's conversion to the faith. Yay and amen, Mike. I love that prayer. And we are praying right along with you. $5,935 to go. 
And uh, we still have, I don't know, five minutes, just just over five minutes now. 877-711-8500. If you're on the fence, can I encourage you to get off that fence? I need big gifts, and I'm going to need them now. $5,800, and I have five minutes to get it done. So if you can do $10 one time, I need you to call it in immediately and not wait any further. If you can do 1560 at the Apostle Club level gift, I need to hear that right now. If we can get this done, we're going to get $10,000 extra dollars on top of your generosity. So no matter your gift size, there's 10 grand waiting. So don't wait. Don't delay. Call right now, 877-711-8500. Let's make this a big hour this morning. Karen, Rochester, New York, $70 one time. You are on the team, Karen, and we love having you here. Praise be to God. Catherine from Low Stand, Illinois, is on the team. Glory be to God. $360 one time. That's a dollar a day, Catherine. You are amazing. God bless you and God love you. 877-711-8500. Getting down to just about four minutes to go. $5,505 still to raise. Boy, it's going to be close. If we can get a couple of Apostle Club level gifts, I think we can do this. 877-711-8500 is the phone number. 877-711-8500. Please do consider a financial contribution. If we can raise this $5,500 in the next three minutes, we can get an additional $10,000. And I got to tell you, uh, there was a lot of missed goals yesterday. It would be amazing to start this hour off today with $20,000 to make up for that. You would be an incredible help and a generous uh, giver of our fund and our our mission if you could call that gift in right now, 877-711-8500, 877-711-8500. I hear phone lines, but I am with Paul. Oh, check it out. Rome, Ohio is on the team, $100. We are praying for... For Paul and Deb, thank you so much, Paul. We really appreciate you being on the team today. Thank you for being on our side. 877-711-8500. Three minutes on the clock. $5,400 still to go. Oof. Is it? Are we going to get there? Are we? Could you imagine getting to like $9,000 and then missing the extra 10? I mean, that would be just insane. If this programming has been at all a benefit to you, Please do consider a gift at 877-711-8500, 877-711-8500. You can donate online, too, at thestationofthecross.com. But uh, let me just encourage you to pick up a, a phone and make that call. 877-711-8500 is the phone number. 877-711-8500. So we're down to the wire, just about two minutes on the clock. And still $5,400 to raise. I'm trying to refresh as fast as possible. Oh, we got a couple more here. Carmelin from Depew, New York, $50 one time and a first-time donor. God bless you, Carmelin. I am so great grateful you're on the team. Pray for family's conversion. We are praying. Anonymous from Chelsea, Massachusetts, $50 one time. Prayer for conversion of the whole world. Oof, I love that one. And Anonymous also get called in. to $250. That's a... Sustainer level gift, safe travels for his wife and his son. Anonymous, we are praying for you. We are down to just about $5,000 with just under two minutes on the clock now to go. That phone number is 877-711-8500. If we could get three Apostle Club level givers, only three callers calling in big gifts right now, would really put a chunk in this and make it truly possible for us to hit this goal before we run out of time. $5,000 to go, just over a minute left on the clock, 877-711-8500. If you have gotten anything out of the programming you hear at the Station of the Cross, either on our radio stations, on our worldwide iCatholic Radio mobile app, on our podcast feed, our YouTube or Facebook channels, or wherever else you encounter our content, Please do me a favor and make a contribution, but I need your call like right now. Anonymous from Wakefield, Massachusetts, came in big. 
With an apostle club level gift, praise be to God, Anonymous in Wakefield. You are amazing. God bless you. Pray for the renewal of people's faith and prayers for family. We are praying. Thank you so much, Anonymous in Wakefield, Massachusetts. That brings us to $3,500. That is the need as of right now, $3,500. Here's the deal. 45 seconds on the clock. $3,500 to go. If we can get all 35 before we start the next hour, we're going to get an additional 10 grand. So I need you big and I need you like right now. Please, any gift, any size, I need about 20 calls right now. 877 711 $8,500. I, I mean, 8500 877 711 8500 is the phone number. 877 711 8500. I need about 20 calls right now to get this done. 877 711 8500. Please call right now. <laughs> 